আসসালামু আলাইকুম বাংলাদেশের সর্ববৃহৎ অনলাইন মেডিকেল প্ল্যাটফর্ম অ্যাক্সেস মেডিকেল স্কুল আয়োজিত গাইনি অ্যান্ড অব সিরিজের আরো একটি ক্লাসে আপনাদের সবাইকে জানাচ্ছি আন্তরিক সালাম ও শুভেচ্ছা যে যেখান থেকে ক্লাসটি দেখছেন আশা করছি সবাই ভালো আছেন এবং সুস্থ আছেন আজকে ইতিমধ্যে হয়তো জেনেই গেছেন আমাদের ক্লাসের টপিক হচ্ছে নর্মাল লেবার এবং এই ক্লাসটিতে অনারেবল মেন্টর হিসেবে আছেন ডক্টর তাহমিন আফরিন ডেজি ম্যাম অ্যাসোসিয়েট প্রফেসর অব সেন্ট গাইনি ইনস্টিটিউট অব চাইল্ড অ্যান্ড মাদার হেলথ এবং হোস্ট হিসেবে পুরো ক্লাসটিতে আছি আমি নওশিন আফরিন আজকের এই ক্লাসটি নিয়ে যদি কারো কোনো প্রশ্ন থেকে থাকে তাহলে কমেন্ট বক্সে অথবা চ্যাট বক্সে আমাদেরকে বলতে পারেন ইনশাল্লাহ আমরা আনসার দেওয়ার চেষ্টা করব। আমরা সরাসরি চলে যাব ম্যামের কাছে ম্যাম আসসালামু আলাইকুম ম্যাম কেমন আছেন আলহামদুলিল্লাহ ভালো আছি তুমি ভালো আছো তো জি ম্যাম আলহামদুলিল্লাহ জি ম্যাম আমরা শুরু করতে পারি ইনশাল্লাহ আজকে আমি যে টপিকটি সিলেক্ট করেছি নরমাল লেবার নরমাল লেবার আমরা সবাই জানি আবার অনেক সহজ আবার অনেক ডিফিকাল্ট আবার অনেক কনফিউশন আমার মনে হয় আমার সাথে সবাই একমত হবে তো আমি অ্যাকচুয়ালি এই নর্মাল লেবারের যে সেশনটি আছে আমি এটাকে একটু প্যালিটেবল এবং সহজ করার চেষ্টা করব আশা করি সবার ভালো লাগবে প্রথমে যদি আসি আমরা যদি জানতে চাই যে হোয়াট ইস নর্মাল লেবার নর্মাল লেবার বলতে আসলে ইট ইজ এ সিরিজ অফ ইভেন্টস দ্যাট টেক্স প্লেস হোয়ার ইন দ্য জেনিটাল অর্গানস ইন এ ইফোর্ট টু এক্সপেল the viable product of the conception out of the womb through vagina into the outer world ekhane onek gulo kotha ache kotha gulo hocche womb e je product of conception ti ache shetike amar expelled out korte hobe outer world e through vagina ekti series of events er madhye etekei amra normal labor bolchi নর্মাল লেবারের সাথে আরো দু একটি টার্ম চলে আসে সাপোজ মিনি লেবার অর প্রি টার্ম লেবার প্রি টার্ম লেবার আমরা খুব সহজেই বুঝতে পারছি বিফোর দ্য এজ অফ ভায়াবিলিটি দ্যাট মিনস বিফোর থার্টি সেভেন উইক অ্যান্ড দ্য থার্টি সেভেন কমপ্লিটেড উইক প্রায়র টু থার্টি সেভেন কমপ্লিটেড উইক যে লেবারটি সংগঠিত হবে দ্যাট ইজ কলড প্রি টার্ম লেবার অ্যান্ড Uh, during normal labor process, all the processes are happened, but the fetus is pre-viable. This is mini labor. That means before 37 completed week, if this series of events takes place, this is called preterm labor. And if in pre-viable age of the fetus, this series of events takes place, this is called mini labor. Is there any difference between uh, normal labor and delivery? Yes, there is difference between norm labor and delivery. Delivery may be happened either per abdominal root or per vaginal root. The delivery that happened through per abdominal root, it can be called cesarean section. But the delivery that happened through parvaginal route it may be spontaneous it may be aided normal labor must fulfill some criteria to call it normal labor at least five criteria should be fulfilled to call normal labor what are those the pain should be labor should be start spontaneously at term pregnancy and the presentation of the fetus must be longitudinal and the presenting part must be vertex and the process should be should not have any undue prolongation and natural termination with minimal age without having any complication to mother and fetus. When all these five criteria fulfill, then we call it 
normal labor. The synonym of normal labor is eutocia. What is abnormal labor? The synonym of abnormal labor is dystocia. So uh, we can uh, easily say any ailment from normal labor criteria is called abnormal labor or dystocia. Now, when this uh, normal labor started, how can we assume when it started? Basically, there is no hard and fast uh, parameter, but according to Nagel's formula, give us some idea. On expected date of delivery, only 4% labor start. And 80% labor start two weeks before expected date of delivery and one week after expected date of delivery. And in 50% cases, one week prior and one week after expected date of delivery, labor pain may start. Two, uh, two weeks after uh, expected date of delivery, only 10% uh, labor pain start and at 43 weeks, that means three weeks after expected date of delivery, 4% uh, labor pain starts. This is uh, data and all this data um, um, collected from different types of research. Now, how this onset of labor occur? There is no sufficient data regarding human research, but there are some animal research. Regarding animal research, it is said that endocrine and biochemical and mechanical uh, factors are responsible for the causes of onset of labor. Here, fetus, mother, and placenta plays an important role. Just before labor, what happened in fetus? The fetal hypothalamus, pituitary, and adrenal axis here plays an important role. The hypothalamus release, corticotrophin releasing hormone, which acts on fetal pituitary. It acts the secretion of adrenocorticotrophic hormone. And this adrenocorticotrophic hormone acts on fetal um, adrenal gland. Due to uh, action of adrenocorticotrophic hormone on fetal adrenal gland, the fetus causes release of cortisol and dihydroepialdosterone. The cortisol and dihydroepialdosterone plays an important role in the synthesis of estrogen, especially dihydroepialdosterone for estrogen and cortisol plays an important role to reduce the progesterone by decreasing the conversion of pregnenolone to progesterone. What happened in mother? Due to stretching of the uterus, how uterus is stressed? Uterus is stretched by liquor volume and the growing fetus. Due to stretching of the uterus, what happened? The estrogen that is uh, the estrogen that is um, formed from dihydroepialdosterone acts on the maternal pituitary for the secretion of oxytocin. This oxytocin and stretching of the uterus, both these two causes increased myometrial receptor, increased gap junction increase synthesis of prostaglandin E2, F2 alpha, and increase the number of the receptor, increase the sensitivity of the receptor. What happened in placenta? Placenta, just before onset of labor, placenta causes increased oxytocin, increased prostaglandin, Increase estrogen, decrease progesterone, increase interleukin 1, 6, and 8. Here, prostaglandin is an important factor for initiation and maintenance of labor. 
the site of synthesis of prostaglandin is decidual cell myometrium and amnion and chorion. What are the factors triggering the synthesis of this prostaglandin? The factors which are responsible for triggering the synthesis of prostaglandin are increased estrogen, increased corticosteroid, repeated parvaginal examination, separation of the amniotic membrane, infection, etc., etc. So, all these things are responsible for myometrial contraction and the labor process started. Here, uh, regarding the uh, oxytocin receptor, the much more receptor are present in the fundus of the uterus, irrespective of lower uterine segment. And this myometrial receptor sensitivity to oxytocin is increases before the onset of the labor. Some neurological factors are also plays an important role. In myometrium, there is alpha receptor and beta receptor. Alpha receptor is selective for, for estrogen and beta receptor is selective for progesterone. The uterine muscle have got the tremendous capability for contraction and retraction. The contractile unit of the myometrium are actin, myosin, adenosine, triphosphate, and myosin light chain, light chain kinase enzyme and calcium. Before true labor pain started, the patient undergo, patient must undergo the pre-labor condition. How pre-labor condition is characterized. Pre-labor condition can be characterized by feeling of lightening of the patient. Before onset of labor, the presenting part sunken into the deep pelvis. And during this period, patient is feeling light. Sometimes some of the patient at the later stage of the pregnancy or in third trimester may feel the uh, respiratory embarrassment or feeling heaviness in the lower abdomen. Due to this lightening and due to the deep, uh, uh, due to the sunken of the presenting part into the true pelvis, deep pelvis, the patient is feeling light and her, uh, all this uh, feeling of um, this embarrassment, respiratory distress, or um, feeling of unwell being, she relieved from that. And this is called welcome sign. Sunken uh, of the presenting part into the deep pelvis. This is called welcome sign. And it is uh, actually more pronounced in primary gravida patient. Simultaneously, there is a riping of the cervix. Riping of the cervix uh, is another, uh, another pre-labor condition where the cervix become ripe. If you do parvaginal examination, you will find the cervix is soft and the length is less than 1.5 centimeter and you can admit easily one finger and the cervix is easily dilatable. So, riping of the cervix is another hallmark for uh, uh, precondition for starting of the labor pain. How you will differentiate whether it is true labor pain or false labor pain? True labor pain are characterized by Contraction of the uterus at regular interval, the frequency of the contraction gradually increasing and the intensity and duration of the contraction increasing progressively. The show is present along with the uh, contraction of the uterus, the effacement of the cervix, which is progressive in nature and descent of the presenting part 
and formation of the bag of pore water. All these criteria when present, then we call it true labor pain. That means a true labor pain gradually the frequency, intensity, duration, all these things progressively increasing, descent of the presenting part, show present effacement of the cervix and formation of the bag of pore water. And in case of a true labor, if you give enema or sedative, the pain will not relieve. In case of a false labor pain, all these criteria are absent. And if you give enema or sedative, the pain will relieve. Frequently, it is said that in case of a true labor pain, the show is present. What is show? The cervix is covered by a mucosal plug. During starting of the true labor and due to effacement of the cervix, the blood mixed mucus expelled from the cervix. This is called show. And uh, gradually the internal os is dilated. How four water bag is formed? The amniotic sac in which fetus lies during the contraction of the uterus, the part of the amniotic sac in front of the presenting part uh, along with the amniotic fluid uh, peeping or bulges through the uh, internal os uh, uh, and by this way, it causes the formation of the four water bag and the um, and the water bag that is present behind the fetus this is called hind water bag now what are the stages of labor if we divide the the whole labor uh, labor it can be divided into four stages first stage second stage third stage and fourth stage the first stage is uh, first stage extend from starting of the true labor pain up to the full dilatation of the cervix. It takes 12 hours in case of primary gravida and 8 hours in case of 6 hours in case of multigravida. Second stage, it starts from full dilatation of the cervix up to the expulsion of the fetus from the birth canal. And this second stage again divided into propulsive stage and expulsive stage. <clears throat> the expulsive stage is two hours in case of primary gravita, and in case of multi gravita, it is 30 minutes. The third stage comprises the Expulsion of the, from expulsion of the fetus and ends with the expulsion of the placenta and membrane. And uh, there are some uh, time duration and there are some limited uh, time um, we can take uh, for waiting for expulsion of the placenta. It is about 15 minutes in primary gravita and also in multi gravita. There is no variation time in expulsion of the placenta in primary and multi. But if we do active management of the third stage of the labor, it may take five minutes for expulsion of the placenta. And the last stage is the fourth stage of the labor. During fourth stage of the labor, there is no event takes place this is only the observational stage. Observation of the general condition of the patient, observation of the pulse, observation of the blood pressure and pervaginal bleeding, also observation whether uterus is contracted or not. There are some physiological process takes place during normal labor. What are those? The uterine contraction. 
in uh, previously we said the in true labor pain the intensity duration and frequency gradually increasing in case of a true labor pain and the labor pain from where the pain start it starts from the um, it starts from the uh, tubal ostia of the uterus because the pacemaker of the uterus is placed in the tubal ostia during contraction the uterus become hard and globular why there is a pain during contraction of the uterus due to myometrial hypoxia stretching of the peritoneum stretching of the cervix during dilatation and compression of the nerve ganglion that is t10 to lumbar 1 and the features of the uterine contractions include tonus, intensity, duration, and frequency. What is tonus? Tonus is it is the pressure in between the contraction. Normally, uh, we know uh, it is 2 to 3 millimeter of mercury, but in first stage of labor, it is 8 to 10 millimeter of mercury. And what is intensity? It is the degree of uterine systole. Intrauterine pressure is raised 40 to 50 millimeter of mercury during first stage of labor. And it is 100 to 120 millimeter of mercury in the second stage of labor. We know that second stage of labor is full dilatation of the cervix up to the expulsion of the fetus. So, see uh, the maximum uh, pressure 100 to 120 millimeter of mercury in second stage of labor. And the duration of the contraction is 30 seconds initially. Then the duration in the process of labor in second stage, the contraction lasts longer than in the first stage. Previously, we said the frequency is gradually increasing in nature. At first, it comes 10 to 15 minutes interval. But in second stage, 2 to 3 minutes interval, it comes. So, as the labor progresses, the number of contraction, the intensity, and the staying of duration is increasing in nature in true labor pain. Here, the another important term is retraction. The labor process uh, cannot uh, progressive only by contraction. Contraction and retraction, it is the criteria of the uterine muscle. Then what is retraction? Retraction is the phenomena in the labor in which the muscle fibers are permanently shortening. Due to retraction, what happened? Why retraction is necessary in the process of labor? It is necessary because it causes the dilatation of the cervix and effacement of the cervix and it propelling the presenting part to the downward and it favors the separation of the placenta but reduce the surface area. So, effective hemostasis occurs after separation of the placenta. So, retraction is very much important for dilatation of the cervix, effacement of the cervix and propulsion of the presenting part for delivery process, separation of the placenta but reduce the surface area and also important for hemostasis. There are, uh, there are many events that takes place during first stage of labor, second stage of labor, third stage of labor and, um, uh, and uh, previously I said uh,
previously i said no event takes place in the fourth stage of the liver then what happened in the first stage of liver in first stage of liver already we know the dilatation of the cervix and effacement of the cervix will occur dilatation of the cervix is described in the term in centimeter when the cervix become 10 cm this is called full dilatation of the cervix and the effacement or taken up the of the cervix is the cervix is completely merged with the upper uterine segment we know the length of the cervix is 2.5 cm but when the cervix is completely taken up or completely effaced then no cervix is remain for measurement it is completely merged with the body of the uterus due to effacement of the cervix the labor process ultimately progresses what events takes place in the second stage of the labor in second stage of the labor previously i said the full dilatation of the cervix and the expulsion of the fetus and it has got two uh, two events propulsive events and expulsive events propulsive events from full dilatation of the cervix until head touches the pelvic floor and expulsive event after touching the pelvic floor up to the bear down and push until the baby is delivered and in third stage the important event takes place in third stage of the labor what is that events separation of the placenta and expulsion of the placenta actually the plane of separation of the placenta through the deep spongy layer of the decidua basalis and there are two way for separation of the placenta one is central separation another is marginal separation actually separation is facilitated partly by uterine contraction and also by weight of the placenta after separation of the placenta when it um, it uh, it uh, come down on the bogy lower uterine segment by uterine contraction and contraction of the abdominal muscle it is expelled out uh, when it fails then the placenta is expelled by Uh, control cord traction and this is manual procedure after separation of the placenta how bleeding is controlled occlusion of the uh, affected by the complete retraction after separation of the placenta there are many sinuses open in the endometrial layer and these sinuses are occluded by the complete retraction previously i said the retraction have got important role the one point is hemostasis and reduce the surface area of the separation of placenta the principal mechanism of the hemostasis by retraction and by reducing the surface area of the placental separated area and thrombosis of the exposed sinuses or termed sinuses and a position of the walls of the uterus by expulsion of the placenta so after separation of the placenta all these important events are responsible to reduce the pph again i mention the mechanism of control of the bleeding the occlusion of the sinuses by complete retraction and principal mechanism is the hemostasis and there are some torn sinuses which are open thrombosis takes place there and reduces bleeding and a position of the anterior and posterior wall after separation of the placenta and expulsion of the placenta by this way the bleeding are minimized previously Uh, we discuss what are the causes of development of normal labor 
and next we discuss the events of the normal labor now we know now we have to know the what is the mechanism of normal labor why it is called the mechanism of normal labor because a series of events takes place here or uh, on the head in the process of adaptation during its journey through the pelvis that is why it is called the mechanism of labor if we summarize the mechanism of labor uh, in occipital lateral position the engagement diameter is the transverse diameter of the inlet and the engaging diameter of the head is suboccipital if it is suboccipital pragmatic then it is uh, diameter is 9.5 cm and if it is suboccipital frontal the diameter is 10 cm at first engagement takes place what does engagement means uh, it can be um, uh, it can be uh, ruled out by rule of 5 if you place your hand on the suprapubic region and try to palpate the presenting part or head, uh, if it is fifth-fifth palpable, the head is not engaged. If it is four-fifth palpable, head is not engaged. Three-fifth, not engaged. If it is two-fifth palpable, the head is just engaged. And if it is one-fifth palpable, head is engaged and it is zero fifth palpable, the head is deeply engaged. Zero fifth means no, no uh, part of the head is remain to palpate when you examine part abdominally. After engagement of the head by maintaining flexion attitude, the fetal part is descent and ultimately it touches the pelvic floor and touches the pelvic floor and internal rotation occur. The occiput, internal rotation of the occiput occur anteriorly to its circle and simultaneous rotation of the shoulder occur anteriorly one its circle. So see occiput uh, rotation anteriorly one uh, two its circle and shoulder rotation one its circle. There is a remaining one its circle. As a result, there is a twisting of the torsion of the neck. Then further descent takes place and crowning of the head occur. After internal rotation, the, tor uh, the tortuous head descends of the head maximum and head diameter, when head diameter stretches the valval outlet, this is called crowning. Uh, in Bhaiba, you may ask, what is crowning? Is it, um, is it uh, reversible or fixed? Crowning is when the maximum diameter of the presenting part stretches the vulva, this is called crowning and this is the fixed position. After crowning, the delivery of the head occurs by extension. And here, couple of theory, couple of force theory is applied. After delivery of the head, there is a restitution. What is restitution? It is the visible passive movement of the head for untwisting the neck. After restitution, there is an external rotation. External rotation of the head due to internal rotation of the shoulder. After internal rotation of the shoulder, the delivery of the anterior shoulder then delivery of the posterior shoulder, then delivery of the body, that means trunk by lateral flexion. In nutshell, this is the summary of the mechanism of labor. This is a little bit uh, hard, but if you, uh, if you minutely observe, there is a rhythm. See, engagement, then Descent by maintaining flexion attitude touches the pelvic floor and there is a 
rotation of the occiput anteriorly two eighth, rotation of the shoulder one eighth. So there is a twisting of the neck. Then further descent and crowning. Crowning means the distension of the vulva by maximum presenting diameter of the presenting part. After crowning, delivery of the head by extension and there is a restitution. That means untwisting of the neck. Then external rotation and this is simultaneous with internal rotation of the shoulder. Then delivery of the anterior shoulder, delivery of the posterior shoulder, then delivery of the trunk by lateral flexion. I think if you minutely read it, um, it will be easier to you. Previously, uh, I told there are some events takes place in the first stage of labor, in the second stage of labor. Uh, how you will assess the dilatation of the cervix? Dilatation of the cervix relates to the uh, cervical dilatation, relates to the dilatation of the external os and effacement is determined by length of the cervix um, uh, of the cervi uh, cer uh, cervical canal length of the cervical canal. That means cervical dilatation is related to the dilatation of the external os and effacement is determined by the length of the cervical canal. Cervical dilatation, how we, you express cervical dilatation? You can express cervical dilatation by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 centimeter. Previously, I mentioned fully dilated cervix means 10 centimeter. And effacement may be 100% effaced. It may be 25%, uh, 50%, or 100%. What is the rim of the cervix? Rim of the cervix is used when the depth of the cervical tissue surrounding the os is about 0.5 to 1 centimeter. All the process of labor you can monitor by partograph. What is partograph? It is the graphical representation of the dilatation of the cervix and descent of the presenting part in relation to in relation to um, duration. Now partograph is revised, and now it is called labor care guide. There are many more information in the labor care guide, irrespective of partograph. The partograph have got the two component, maternal component and fetal component. And um, it is very important for normal vaginal delivery uh, to prevent undue prolongation, to prevent obstructed labor, and uh, to take uh, active measure uh, by, uh, record, by plotting a partograph when a patient goes to active stage of labor. In case of primary gravida, what is the rate of dilatation of the cervix? And in case of multi, what is the rate of dilatation of the cervix? In primary gravida, one centimeter per hour dilatation of the cervix when patient is in active labor. And in case of multi gravida, 1.5 centimeter when uh, patient is in active labor. The membrane, uh, it is important to see the condition of the membrane when patient is in active labor. Usually, membrane is intact. If before full dilatation of the cervix, membrane is ruptured, then this term is called the early rupture of the membrane. And when before start of the labor pain, membrane is ruptured, this is called premature rupture of the membrane. During labor process, uh, some alteration takes place um, regarding mother pulse and blood pressure. The pulse rate is increases 10 to 15 beats per minute during contraction. And systolic blood pressure rises 10 millimeter of mercury during contraction. What about fetal heart rate? Fetal heart rate decreases during contraction. So. What is the rules? You must see fetal heart rate in between the contraction. During second stage of labor, what happened? This is, um, uh, I, must, uh, I must mention the bearing down effort of the mother. 
those who are working in the labor ward, they know what is bearing down effort. When patient show the bearing down effort, then everyone will be busy for accepting the uh, accepting the delivery and accepting the deli um, delivered fetus. Bearing down effort is the expulsive effort that appear during the second stage of the labor. After that, uh, patient deliver this baby. Without bearing down effort, uh, delivery can't happen. And when a patient show bearing down effort, we must do uh, internal examination to see the condition of the presenting part and to see the um, to see the uh, status of the presenting part. How you will identify the station of the presenting part? And the station of the presenting part, you can um, you can identify by doing internal examination. And uh, during uh, internal examination, we must find uh, we must identify the ischial spine. And this is the zero level. <laughs> yeah. And above ischial spine, the presenting part may be plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five. And below ischial spine, if the presenting part is present, it may be minus one, minus two. Uh, sorry. Ischial spine is the... Um, uh, I mean, ultia bullifilum. Ischial spine is the um, bony landmark uh, for station and it is zero. Below ischial spine, it is plus, and above ischial spine, it is minus. And the score up to five, both minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and minus five, and below plus one, plus two, plus three, uh, etc. So, here, the, what is the important point? The important point is that when we do parvaginal examination and search for station of the presenting part, we must identify the ischial spine. And ischial spine is the zero demarcation. And if the presenting part is um, situated above the ischial spine, this is minus, uh, minus scoring. And if the presenting part is below the ischial spine, this is plus scoring. Clinical course of the third stage of the labor is the expulsion of the fetus, previously I told, and uh, expulsion of the membrane. And after expulsion of the uh, placenta, expulsion, um, uh, the events in the third stage of the labor is the expulsion of the placenta. What are the events that takes place? Previously I told, there is a separation of the placenta and expulsion of the placenta. And after expulsion of the placenta, placenta and membrane must be examined uh, for missing any uh, part of the membrane or missing any cotyledon of the uh, placenta. Now, the important question is that, what is the place for normal delivery? MDG4 and MDG5, I think you know what is, M what is MDG. MDG is Millennium Goal Development. Millennium Goal Development 4 and 5, they say um, every delivery should be attended by skilled birth attendant. That means 100% delivery attendant by skilled birth attendant. To reduce the maternal mortality below 100%. And the perinatal mortality below 30%. Perinatal death below 30%. So, uh, but still now, more than 90, uh, still now around 87 to 90% delivery still now takes place at home. But uh, nowadays, uh, Skill birth attendant are already trained and um, they are scattered uh, whole of the Bangladesh and most of the um, antenatal um, checkup, uh, most of the most of the patient, uh, most of the deliver, uh, most of the antenatal patient, they are uh, already counseled 
and they are already supervised by them. And I think um, within a very short period of time, we can ensure the 100% attendant of the um, normal delivery by skilled birth attendant. We hope that. Now, the management of the normal labor. Regarding management, if we consider the general consideration, uh, then uh, the there are some aids, there are some uh, uh, instrument we must have for management of the normal labor. We must do the antiseptic and aseptic precaution. And vaginal examination during labor, it is in evident. It must be done, uh, but there are some uh, preliminaries you must maintain before pervaginal examination. What are those preliminaries? Hand wash, at least for three minutes. Wear sterile gloves, toileting of the vulva. Vulval toileting is very much important. It may be antiseptic lotion like 10% Dettol or Hibitin. And uh, introduction of the index finger and middle finger, which is gloved. When you will do, frequently you will ask in exam, what are the indications of pervaginal examination? Is there any hard and fast rule where you can do pervaginal examination? Or is, is there is any restriction when you can't do the pervaginal examination? Yes. At first, you can do pervaginal examination for pelvic assessment. You can do pervaginal examination to see the progress of labor. Immediately after rupture of the membrane, you can do pervaginal examination to see the condition of the presenting part and if uh, other structure, um, whether come along with the gush of liquor, like cord. And uh, if you think any interference is necessary, any interference is necessary at that time, you can do pervaginal examination. And when the patient show the bearing down effort, you can do pervaginal examination for assessing the patient in second stage of the labor, ideally. Before four hour, four hourly, you can do pervaginal examination, ideally. But repeated pervaginal examination, you can do if um, any decision um, uh, you want to take according to the condition of the patient. If there is a sudden rupture of the membrane and gush of like are expel, um, escaped out and during bearing down effort. Now, what is the basic principle of management of the first stage of labor? The basic principle is watchful expectancy and monitor carefully. How? by labor care guide. <laughs> Actually, generally, you can reassure the patient and uh, patient must be in the comfortable position and um, give supply nutritious liquid diet and give uh, her favorite personal accompany and reassure the patient repeatedly. Along with this, um, evacuate, uh, ev evacuate her bowel and um, in, in first stage of preparation and then if bladder is full, uh, the evacuate the bladder by plain rubber catheter. For relieving pain, you can give analgesia, but if the delivery is imminent within two hours, no need of giving pethidine as an analgesia. And assessment of the progress of labor, you can done by labor care guide and parabdominal examination uh, to see the fetal heart rate half hourly in first stage of the labor. And uh, during uh, examination of the abdomen, you must see the fetal uh, heart rate in between the contraction. And you must count the fetal heart rate at least for one minute, 60 second. What is fetal heart, um, uh, what is the normal fetal heart rate? 
110 to 150. We accept 110 to 150 normal fetal heart rate. In case of a high risk pregnancy, you can monitor by continuous electric electronic fetal monitoring. And pervisional examination, you will do four hourly. What, uh, what you will uh, see by doing internal examination or vaginal examination, dilatation of the cervix, the note the presenting part, whether it is flexed or deflexed, the if membrane is ruptured, color of the liquor, and if there is any molding, what is molding? Molding means overlapping of the skull bone. At first, molding takes place between occipitoparietal base and then molding takes place between the parietal bones. And you also notice whether there is any caput formation or not. If liquor is stained, then there is a evidence of fetal distress, then decision should be taken. What is the management of second stage of labor? Actually, management of second stage of labor is the preparation for delivery of the baby. During second stage of the labor, the intensity, frequency, and duration of the uh, uterine contraction gradually increasing, and there is a bearing down effect. Uh, the patient uh, may experience with the arch for defecation, and there is a complete dilatation of the cervix. That is, the cervical dilatation is 10 centimeter. It has got uh, two stage. Previously, I state propulsive and expulsive. During uh, um, during uh, full uh, after full dilatation of the cervix, when it is eminent for normal uh, uh, delivery, then position should be taken uh, in dorsal position with 15 degree left tilt, and uh, um, the Doctor should wear. Uh, uh, doctor should um, uh, wear uh, proper uh, scrubbing. What are those? Use sterile gown, mask, gloves, and stand on the right side of the uh, table, and toileting of the external genitalia. The ascent. Aseptic, uh, aseptic procedure are remembered. What are those? Three S's. Clean hand, clean surface, and clean cutting and ligature of the cord. That means for successful delivery. And uh, it is, uh, it is uh, guided by WHO that during delivery, 3S must maintain. And I already told what are those 3S, clean hand, clean surface, clean cutting, and ligature of the cord. Then conduction of the delivery. How delivery is conducted? Previously, I told um, delivery of the head, delivery of the shoulder, and delivery of the tongue. Delivery of the head uh, by maintaining flexion attitude, the crowning occur and then delivery of the head by extension. Immediately after delivery of the head, some important work a physician must do. What are those? Cleaning of the mouth, cleaning of the nose and cleaning of the eye. And immediately after delivery of the head, must uh, look for uh, neck as there is any cord around the neck or not. And after that, delivery of the anterior shoulder, delivery of the posterior shoulder, and then delivery of the trunk by lateral flexion. <clears throat> During delivery, the precaution should be taken to prevent the perineal tear or laceration. How we can prevent the laceration of the uh, perineum. To prevent the early extension, spontaneous forcible delivery of the head is to be avoided. And head must be delivered in between the contraction. If it seems that 
perineum is very much tight, it, it threats to tear, then must give episiotomy. And take care during delivery of the shoulder. If we take all this precaution, we can prevent the laceration of the perineum. <clears throat> immediately after delivery, the umbilical, uh, uh, immediate after delivery, the care of the newborn should be taken. Immediately after delivery, uh, the cord clamp is important thing. And after delivery of the baby, baby must, baby must hold below the level of the uterus to facilitate the transfer of the blood from placenta to the infant. And ear passage must be cleaned, previously I mentioned, and Abgar score must be rating and clamping of the umbilical cord. The first clamp should be done 2.5 centimeter uh, away from the navel and the second uh, clamp one centimeter away from the first clamp. Is there any role? Is there any uh, is there any good thing uh, for the baby if we delay in clamping? There are some fallacies. If we delay in clamping two to three minutes, then 80 to 100 ml blood from placenta goes to the fetus. But it is deleterious in case of a premature baby and in case of a IUGR baby. And in, if mother is RH negative, then early clamping is recommended. In third stage of labor, what we can do? How we will manage the patient? I think you can remember third stage of the labor. Third stage of the labor. Uh, third stage of labor. Uh, previously, I mentioned what happened in third stage of labor: delivery and separation of the placenta and expulsion of the placenta. Uh, <clears throat> and it is the most crucial moment because if this third stage of the labor, if not managed properly, the patient will develop postpartum hemorrhage and this is the main cause of maternal death in worldwide. Steps of management of the third stage of labor, we can divide by two, expected management and active management. Expectant management is the traditional management. That is constant watching and um, wait for separation of the placenta. What are the signs of separation of the placenta? Signs of separation of the placenta is the um, height of the uh, uterine contraction and height of the uterus is increased, gradual lengthening of the umbilical cord, and there is a gush of fresh blood comes out, and the uh, and uh, the uterus become hard and globular. All these things are signs of separation of the placenta. And uh, during uh, watching, uh, we must catheterize the bladder to empty and we must uh, place one hand on the uterus. Wait for spontaneous separation of placenta. If placenta is separated, then wait for uh, spontaneous expulsion due to um, due to contraction of the uterus and contraction of the abdominal muscle if it fail then uh, assisted expulsion of the placenta by control cord traction and apply the injection oxytocin 5 to 10 units slowly iv or im I already uh, told you the expectant management of the uh, third stage of the labor. Now, what is the active management of the third stage of labor? Uh, I think you can memorize. Previously, I told active management of the first um, uh, active management of the third stage of labor um, can reduce the timing of the third stage of labor by five minutes. After delivery of the baby, rule out the second baby 
and uh, mm, 10 unit oxytocin apply into IM uh, within one minute. Then place one hand on the uterus and massage and um, see the signs of separation of the placenta. Previously, I told what are the signs of separation of the placenta. That means hardening of the uterus, uh, gradually lengthening of the umbilical cord, and there is a gush of fluid comes out after separation of the placenta. Then, <clears throat> continuous message and delivery of the placenta after separation, delivery of the placenta by control cord traction. <clears throat> this will, um, this active management of the third stage of the labor minimize the blood loss after delivery of the fetus. The fourth stage is the, um, what is the management in the fourth stage of labor? Management in the fourth stage of labor is the observation of the pulse, blood pressure, uh, the pervaginal bleeding, and the maternal condition, and the fetal condition. The active management of the labor is recommended by WHO. What is the advantage? Why? We will uh, do the active management of the third stage of labor to minimize the blood loss uh, by one-fifth and shortening the duration of the third stage of the labor. The only disadvantage is slightly increased incidence of written placenta, but active management is universal and um, active management is very much popular in every hospital and every delivery center. The active management of the third stage of labor is done to minimize the PPH and to minimize the lengthening of the um, third stage of labor. If the administration is uh, mistimed and might happen in a busy labor room, one should not be panicky, but conduct the third stage with uh, conventional watchful expectancy. This is the recommendation. So, normal labor is a very easy thing, but very hard thing. There are many theories, many fallacy. Uh, for uh, examination purpose, uh, you must know what is normal labor, what is ab abnormal labor, uh, what are the causes of normal labor, uh, what is the mechanism of normal labor? What are the events of normal labor? And what are the stages of normal labor? And um, how management takes place uh, in uh, first stage, second stage, third stage of normal labor? And what is the immediate care of the newborn baby after delivery? And what is crowning? What is welcome sign? What is station? What is effacement? Uh, and um, and um, you must um, um, you must know what is MDG four and MDG five. And um, uh, another thing is that uh, the another thing is that uh, you must know the maternal mortality and morbidity and what is the important cause of maternal mortality and morbidity? I already mentioned PPH is the main cause of mortality. So active management of the third stage of labor is very much important um, to combat this PPH. And uh, a uh, term, what are the features of a term baby? You must know this. Um, I didn't um, give you task uh, in this session. Um, in another session, um, uh, I hope I will uh, discuss and um, how you will manage a um, uh, labor patient in first stage, in second stage, in third stage. I hope uh, though it is, um, though uh, there are much more theory here, um, I am trying to uh, present this uh, uh, normal labor to you uh, very simply. Uh, I think you can uh, enjoy every, um, I, I think uh, you enjoy this session. And uh, if you have got any question, you can ask me. I will try my best to deliver um, this to you. 
and um, thank you Axis Medical School for giving me this opportunity to take this session. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Dhanabad, ma'am. আপনার কি অনেক বেশি ধন্যবাদ আমাদের কত সুন্দর একটা ইনফরমেটিভ ক্লাস উপহার দেওয়ার জন্য ইনশাআল্লাহ আমরা নেক্সটে আরো অনেক ক্লাস পাবো আর যত এতক্ষণ যারা আমাদের সাথে ছিলেন সবাইকে ধন্যবাদ অ্যাক্সেসের সাথেই থাকুন আজকে এই পর্যন্তই আসসালামু আলাইকুম